Welcome back. Um, just pulled up on a uh, call I've been to previously. The This isn't something I see a lot. I think I can count on one hand the number of times I've seen this in uh, give or take 20 years of doing this. Um, it's 9.08 a.m. It's 48 degrees outside and the issue here is the TXV, the thermostatic expansion valve on the heat pump condenser is bad. So I'll go over a brief explanation of how to know that that's the issue and then go, go over some uh, tips and tricks on swapping that out and uh, fast forward through all the generic stuff like recovery and that sort of thing and evacuation uh, this is more or less how to diagnose it and how to replace it we're not going to cover how to do you know recover a refrigerant and do an evacuation you can see that in some other videos all right so got everything i need got my tool bag recovery machine vacuum pump 410a recovery tank you should not be recovering R22 and 410A into the same tank. You should have a separate recovery tank for each refrigerant you're working with. I know the norm down here is to just not recover anything and just vent it, but we try and keep it by the book. Torches, gauges, and of course, we have the OEM TXV from Linux which is going to go down inside this condenser um, so that's oh yeah thermo trap putty I was getting that wet haven't used that in a while got to protect the TXV when you're brazing in the new one we're just gonna cook the old one when we take it out um, but now I'm gonna get set up for recovery gonna recover the old refrigerant I'm gonna weigh it out so I gotta go get the scale too because I want to make sure that this thing was properly charged and you can usually find your weigh-ins on the data label okay so let's see here yep factory charge five pounds ten ounces and this is I know this is 410a but yep right there 410a contains 410a so you know if you recover you know let's say ten pounds Somebody grossly overcharged this unit, and that's the reason for the failure. Uh, we did not install this. Um, don't know who did, but this unit is, this is a 2018 model, so it's three to four years old, and we have a condenser TXV failure, which is strange, but I'm gonna go ahead and recover the refrigerant, tear the unit down where we can get to the TXV. almost forgot I got to show you how to diagnose this issue so what I've done I've got my low side hose hooked up to my true suction port high side on the actual suction port can't remember on Linux whether we're gonna read high here or there uh, basically if you have it hooked up and it's reading low just put it on the other one and then I've got a jumper set up for O so I can touch it to R if the pressure starts getting too high or too low, we can pop it into cool mode. Pretty sure that this unit operated fine in cool mode, but it starts starving the condenser coil in heat mode and pushes way too much pressure into the uh, EVAB coil. So that's uh, hopefully what this does again, so I can give you a look at what that looks like.
see it's starting to starve the condenser coil. That's your low pressure. Just jumped out, basically put the unit in cool mode, which we're gonna have the same, we're gonna have the same pressures on that because we're hooked up to true suction and suction. Pressures were starting to rise. I've already checked this out. I'm just giving you a how to. If you let it run for 10 or 15 minutes in cool mode, the pressures equalize out. They're consistent with what the charging chart shows on the back of the uh, access panel. But heat mode, you can even hear the compressor start to strain when the pressure drops down low. That's how I diagnose a bad TXV. Works the same way on the indoor unit. If that pressure starts dropping down low, you can go in and take the sensing bulb off of the indoor unit. And if it doesn't affect the pressure or if you add some refrigerant and the pressure doesn't increase, you know it's the TXV. I'm sure some other people will offer some insight too on how they check. But now we're gonna recover. Got the recovery done. Pulled out five pounds and three ounces. Can't remember what the weigh in was. Yeah, five pounds, 10 ounces. So, I mean, definitely wasn't overcharged. And I'll show you where this TXV is. So, this is the TXV. You know, you got the, the liquid line coming in right there you can't really see it comes through this filter dryer and then it's brazed into the bottom of this txv that's restricting the flow into the evap coil you got all these capillary tubes feeding the coil goes through the coil you know gets compressed back to a uh, high pressure goes through the reversing valve to the evap coil on the suction line or your large line bypasses the TXV or the metering device inside in heat mode cycle starts over when it gets back so that's the culprit um, I'm not going to do any kind of thermal protection taking this one out other than probably right here to protect this uh, silicone or rubber or whatever this is and then we'll completely uh, encapsulate the TXV in the thermo trap when we put the new one in cannot let txvs get hot especially the sensing bulb um, but i'm gonna get some of this stuff out of the way because we're done with the recovery machine and then we'll braze the txv out and put the new one in all right so just found something which i find kind of interesting there's no way this happened by itself but I did not take the top off of this um, when I did my original diagnostic because I knew it was a TXV. There's nothing to really check in the condenser on the TXV, so I just knew that it was bad. But it appears that someone cut the TXV loose from the sensing capillary that goes back to the txv so now we know for a fact that the txv is bad and we are not the uh 
installer and we got this call because the first company that came out the homeowner or the customer didn't like what they had to say which I find this very interesting uh, never seen a capillary tube just you know spontaneously break off and that certainly looks like it was cut but hey who knows but I'm trying to get an angle on brazing this out um, there is no other way that I'm aware of to get this out without heat um, the only alternative would be to get a new I call this a header assembly with the capillary tubes you could get that and um, I guess you could braise the filter dryer out at the bottom or cut it and add some tubing but you know the unit's empty there might be a little bit of oil in here that's going to catch on fire when we pull this out but we're going to heat this first get this header assembly out of the TXV then we're going to heat the braze below it where the uh, it's attached to the filter dryer and then we're going to braze out this piece here which is the equalizer tube um, let's see if the new one came with that uh, so what we'll have to do is cut the end of this off because there is no uh, port there to hook this up to so we'll just cut the flare off the end of this and we'll push it in where that one was All right, that's done. I'm gonna let that cool off while we get our vacuum started. So I know that we're sealed up, that there's not any leaks because my Micron level's down below a thousand already. Vacuum pump's been running a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting up my torches and get everything cleaned up, put the unit back together, you know, while we wait on the evacuation to get finished. Had some technical difficulties, found my battery dead, but uh, we've got the vacuum pulled, stayed below 500 microns for the, we do a 15 minute decay and charged it back up at uh, the factory charge.
pressures look a lot better the uh, compressor has a little bit of a rattle may have uh, been some damage caused by the the homeowner running the unit in heat mode with it starving the condenser coil but uh we'll see what happens moving forward um but that's it we got the txv swapped out pressures look good i'm gonna put up the rest of our stuff collect from the uh homeowner and we're gonna get out of here